Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's when the United Kingdom in Bury, in the north of England, in Greater Manchester, at four o'clock on Tuesday, November the 14th, two days before my 60th birthday. And in fact, here we are with a very, very nice black diesel modern Jag XJ V6 who's just been passed by a beautiful tortoise shell cat. I'm a cat fanatic. Uh, the reason we have this vehicle for one evening is that the gentleman who's doing the camera, uh, the cameraing today um, uh, it has been uh, tasked with recovering it from its owners uh, uh, over in North Wales today and taking it on to Yorkshire where it will be auctioned tomorrow. It's a three-year-old vehicle, it's immaculate and shows the style and the tight lines. Uh, the interesting thing is that of course Jaguar uh, pro currently provide the official transport of the British Prime Minister Theresa May and she has at least three one of which externally looks almost like, looks identical to this it's a black XJ or it's a little bit longer because it's an XJL which you may know is a long wheelbase version except it is totally different to this because it's an XJL Sentinel now the Sentinel is the special armoured version of the Jaguar it has a vastly more powerful engine it's double the weight allegedly has tear gas canisters um, in case the vehicle is, is surrounded by an angry mob we hope our Prime Minister never gives rise to those sorts of feelings and uh, in addition there were supposed to be sec uh, secret uh, bullet uh, secret gun ports inside which you can't see on the outside which allow uh, bodyguards to, to shoot through a small small sections which are not armoured to allow them to shoot out. In addition, it's supposed to have its own air supply in case of um, attack with gas, so it can be sealed off. In addition, it is supposed to have um, a huge metal plate underneath in, in case of, uh, of going over bombs and obviously run flat, flat tires. So not really as good as President Trump's massive vehicle, this his current beast, but still, uh, for 150,000 UK pounds, uh, cheap at half the price. This, however, isn't one of those. It's a very nice standard one, and I hope I will never have the requirement of a bulletproof car. Uh, I hope I don't ever arouse that sort of animosity. I've actually, oddly enough, seen the Prime Minister's um, black uh, um, Jaguar. She's also got a silver one, and I think there's a there's a grey one as well. Um, as I happened to work some years ago in the building, where for the um, the the general election debate in 2015, there was a debate between all the leaders, and it just happened to be um, in a media-owned building in a complex in the Media Keys, Salford, Greater Manchester. Well, I happened to work at the time, so I got uh, the third degree for security and I arrived in the morning. But then the cars arrived with the British leadership. And uh, yes, there was the, the Prime Minister's Sentinel. And they left it unattended, parked at the back, um, whilst she was involved in the leaders' debate, which was televised live coast to coast across Britain. Which I didn't think was very good, because anyone could have planted a limpet mine if I'd been a nasty terrorist, which I'm not. But I had a chance to, to, to examine the vehicle. It look, did look just like this, except, except the rear, the external of, um, appearance of the rear windows was extremely heavy privy for that. You couldn't see anything at all inside there. I also saw quite a number of, of UK government ministers arrive that day, and they mainly seem to have 7 Series BMWs in black, which I don't think is buying British personally and playing the game, but there you have it. Okay, so now, now we're looking inside this uh, beautiful modern XJ. Of course, right-hand drive here in the UK, fully automatic with all the uh, extras uh, 
that Jaguar have, of course, these days as standard. Uh, beautiful car, and as I said, said earlier, externally identical to the Prime Minister Theresa May's, except it's not armoured. And uh, yes, in a modern frame, I think they've done a good job with the new XJ. They've managed to retain the beautiful feel of it with the walnut burr and uh, again a very solid car it's a v6 diesel a diesel so right it, uh, it's very efficient to drive automatic so it was uh, on the motor it was it was a, a doing about 80, or I shouldn't say that. So it's I? been brought up, well, not... <laughs> uh, 70, at, uh, uh, less yes, than uh, 2,000 uh, two revs. Just to remind our viewers on UK freeways, uh, the, 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 the speed limit is 70, so our cameraman has just confessed to doing 80 at times uh, coming over from Wales uh, uh, this afternoon, so uh, uh, we shall uh, pretend we haven't heard that, shall we? So... Again, typical managing, what we call a managing director's car, you would call a vice, you would call a president um, or a vice president, your director's car. The sort of car that uh, you would have if you were a professional man, an attorney, an accountant, an architect. You so can't... here we have uh, a diesel, highly, highly tuned Jaguar engine. Very, very lively and fast. V6. And also quiet. Uh, historically, diesels used to have a certain ticking noise which used to infuriate people and be pretty dirty and nasty things. Uh, and in, of course, there have been some scandals with volume produced car diesel engines not being as clean as the official figures would indicate. I don't think one has the same problem with Jaguars. I think luxury car diesel engines are of the very highest quality and uh, give outstanding performance, often better than, than its comparable petrol engine, whilst maintaining very high uh, standards of, uh, of filtration and very low noise levels, uh, which always used to be a problem with the earlier diesels. And doesn't really sound like a diesel at all. That that that, that tapping noise that I associate with with early taxi cabs from from my childhood seems to be but a fading memory these days. So this car is going to auction in the county of West Yorkshire, in the north of England, tomorrow morning. We wish it well with its new owner, and we are certain that they will enjoy and be well pleased with their buying choice. Nice. I have a nearer driving position, but uh, certainly I would be very content to drive the 200 miles, 300 kilometres down to London in this right now and would enjoy the journey. And the journey would be very quiet. This is a very quiet car, but a very powerful one. And there is a certain cachet, I think, even today about driving a Jaguar. Okay. The Rolls-Royce owners of this world, the Bentley owners of this world, the Mercedes and the BMW owners of this world, the guys that own the, the big Cadillacs may also claim their own cachet. But a Jaguar, I think, is an English gentleman's car. And that is self-evident. So... Uh, it's still got, was it, pace, space and grace. Is oh. it, uh, maybe not be in that order. <laughs> But that's what the uh, Jaguars are supposed to do, Great isn't it? Space and grace. Well, there that used was to be William a, a Many years ago in England, for the previous uh, traditional shape XJ, there used to be a big advertising campaign in all the colour supplements and motoring press, on the, usually on the inside front cover, which said, basically, uh, showed a photo of a Jaguar and said, uh, as you make your way home after all the trials and tribulations of the day, at least you're, you know that your life has not been totally without success. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that sums it up.